Welcome to Gone Fishing, a show diving into cybersecurity threats that surround our highly connected lives. Every human is different. Every person has unique vulnerabilities that expose them to potentially successful social engineering. On this show, we'll discuss human vulnerability and how it relates to unique individuals. I'm Connor Swan, CEO of FinSecurity, and welcome to Gone Fishing. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Gone Fishing. I'm your host, Connor Swan, CEO of FinSecurity, and I'm joined by a, a, a million things I got to say here. A wonderful friend of mine, a great person in general, CEO and co-founder of OIT, and the co-founder of MSP, MSP Media, Media Network. Network. Yep. There we go. I got it. I got it. Which uh, often gets confused for MSP News Network all the time. Uh, yeah, I get it. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm good, dude. I'm good. It's another beautiful day in Miami. Uh, as per the rules of Miami summers, my AC is broken. Um, so if you see me melting or suddenly getting shorter, you know what happened. Uh, but I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. I was going to say, if we see a ghostly arm reach a, reach from the side and slightly dab your forehead with a towel, we'll know it's because the AC is not on, right? Or, or that or the palm fronds just, you know, cooling me down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So... For those, for those of you who don't know Ray, Ray is one of the first folks that I met in the, I'll air quote it, MSP industry here. He is an amazing person, knows a lot about MSP, started at an MSP and building one. So that's what we're going to be talking about with Ray Rossini. So I got a question for you, Ray. Oh. What is the current state of the MSP industry? And that is a broad question because I wanted you to give, take it anywhere you want. I mean, I, th- I think it starts with, can I curse? No, I'm kidding. It will get bleeped um, out, but you can, absolutely. Oh, we use dolphins. I'm, I'm all for it. Um, so, no, I mean, the, the state of the MSP industry is interesting because we keep hearing cyber insurance all over the place, right? Um, we hear about breaches. We hear about security. Uh, we hear about tool fatigue at the same time. We hear about clients that are refusing to pay via ACH uh, or automated methods of payment. Um, we have all this stuff going on and it sometimes I can, I know for the MSPs, it can feel inundated, like inundating, right? Like overwhelming, like all this stuff is going on and I got to keep track of it. And CISA keeps notifying me. The CompTIA ISOC keeps notifying me every five minutes of like the next great zero day, you know, CVSS 10.0, you know, I'm, we're all screwed. Right. Um, and I don't, I look at it and I see, this is an amazing opportunity, regardless of the government regulation, regardless of the cyber insurance uh, policy shifting. Um, regardless of the increased security uh, that's necessary, I see this as an amazing time. Look at Carnegie, look at Ford. People made their billions, well, millions at the time, but they made their millions when struggle was happening, when there were difficulties, and because they did it better than anybody else. So the MSPs that I've been begging to catch up to enterprise uh, years ago by bringing on an automation person, um, you know, as a Three or four years ago, I was saying most MSPs need to have an automation person on in-house, however they call it. Um, you know, now we're seeing tools that do those automations. And there's tons out there. I won't drop names or anything. Um, but there's tons of those tools out there making it easier for MSPs. And what I'm seeing is we have more access, more education, more community today to be able to solve challenges than we've ever had ever, right? Um, which is how you and I met the benefit of community putting us together. Right. Um, and so I think you have all the resources that were available to only the Henry Fords or only the Carnegie's at the time. You have those resources yourself today. Any MSP is capable of making, you know, crazy amounts of money, Scrooge McDuck amounts of money (laughs) by just taking, taking these things by the horns and signing up with, Vendors that'll solve challenges like your cyber insurance or like your automation or anything else and make it easy. I, I think this is a great time to be an MSP. What was it like uh, when you were starting your MSP? Uh, I'll, I'll let you decide how many moons ago that was. <laughs> so uh, starts again with can I curse? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so, you know, when I started my MSP, I, I often say, so, you know, I'm a moderator of our MSP, uh, the largest MSP community on the planet. Um, so I'm a moderator there, but because I value community so much, but I often say, I wish I would have had those resources when I was starting out. When I was starting out, it was whoever I knew locally to me, 
Um, and the way I got into it, my big brother from Big Brothers Big Sisters uh, was an IBM engineer, and he would mm -hmm. take me out and taught me computers going out to jobs. Um, and it was awesome. But as I gained local networking colleagues in Miami, uh, I was able to build my skills and obviously going to conventions and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't like there is today where you have Reddit, you have MSP Geek, you have MRU, IT Pool Party, the Facebook groups, Tech Tribe. You have tons of resources today where anything comes up and you have an infinite, almost infinite amount of peer groups. Um, when I was doing it, we had to F around and find out, to be honest. Um, like you, I had the benefit of previous business experience. Um, so that helped a lot. But the truth of the matter is, a lot of it was just see what happened. Whereas today, I, I'm jealous of the MSPs that have all these resources. So, so other than MSPs now having access to these online communities, having access to, I don't know, should I throw in ChatGPT so we can make the nice, right, yeah. cool little label on the podcast episode? Time? I assume that's who made the show notes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what do you see as folks having access to today uh, as anything in addition to those two things? Um, I, I see there's stuff like polite post, right? How many emails have you ever had to write where, you know, the, what you wrote down, you know, damn well, you should not be saying, especially in a business email. Um, <laughs> I, I'm notorious for writing out those angry emails first, erasing it, then restarting it. Um, but you have polite post today where you can write your angry email, get that, you know, that get that out of your system. And then it spits back a really nice email and you can send that to your client. Um, you have really cool tools in the space now that will aggregate all the comments from a, from a ticket and put on put only put in the most uh, important and notable uh, mm. comments in the time entry. Um, and all of this, so you can take the, what's, let's be honest, the most expensive resource in an MSP is the employees, right? Um, yeah. And you can have them do what I like to call the meaningful touches. Uh, logging time entries, let's be honest. You were, you were with me at MSP GeekCon. I, I had a whole room uh, of people complaining. Half the room was complaining about time entries. The other half of the room was owners. So <laughs> also complaining about the lack of time entries. And so we can get, get my $100,000, $150,000 a year engineer out of doing time entries and automate it and let them do the, let it do it for them. So they can do the important stuff of figuring out what the hell happened or making whatever better. Um, these are opportunities MSPs didn't have before. Uh, they didn't have eight months ago, much less yeah. now, uh, or much less 10 months ago. So they can take advantage and it's awesome. What do you think now is when all of these new things are coming about? Is there new focus in the MSP market? Is there something else driving it? What's going on? So I'll liken it to, I've always said MSP is about 10 years behind enterprise, right? Um, RPA is a perfect example. You know, we've seen uh, Roost, Pia, you know, Thread has some automation, but RPA, you know, robotic process automation, that stuff is fairly new to the MSP space within the last 24 months. Mm -hmm. This stuff is 15 years old in, in enterprise land. Uh, path, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and so even look at like auto hotkey, right? Like even simple examples that are not as complex as a rooster or Pia, but they exist. Um, or look at stuff like SIM, right? SIM mm -hmm. and SOC, they're standard fare in most enterprises for decades. This is now becoming a point of contention in MSPs because of the breaches and all that. Um, I think the difference is uh, I'll liken it to my 3D printer. Um, I bought a couple of years ago, I bought it, you know, I love my toys. Um, I bought an Ender 3 V2 because all my research and my deep dive ADHD, like hyper focus research on this stuff, um, told me that the Ender 3 V2 was the best entry level, you know, DIY 3D printer. I'm like, awesome, bet. Bought everything, got it set up, uh, printed one test print. I printed my little boat. I forget, it has a name, but I forget the, the boat's name, uh, the tugboat. And then every other print was miserable. And then I had to level it again and I was struggling with leveling and then I scratched one of the beds and it became a miserable experience to stay in the box and I or stayed in the corner of the room. I never touched it again. Um, fast forward a few months ago, I bought this one from bamboo called uh, bamboo labs X one carbon. Um, and that is literally, I pick one of the, well now nine colors attached to it, nine filament colors, send it over. And if it's multicolors, multicolor and it prints and it's fast as hell. And when it's done, it's done. I don't have to worry about it. It auto levels, it, you know, does the LIDAR detection, see warps in the boards and whatever. And all of that is a roundabout way to say things are easier now. Was there ML? Absolutely. We had to sign up for an AWS service or an Azure service and understand how this stuff works. Yeah, the machine learning is not good. 
Were there generative chatbot, like large language models available 10 years ago? Absolutely. Could you go to ChatG OpenAI's website slash ChatGPT and log in and use it? No, that didn't exist. That showed up seven months ago. All that to say, I use my 3D printer now. It's printing right now. It's 24-7 making stupid little alligators. Um, by the way, if you buy a fun toy, don't show your staff because then they want the toys too. So <laughs> I'm printing like 20 of these things. Um, but all that to say, it's easier to make use of them now, right? This is the Apple model versus the Android model. And I'm an Android user, but I understand the, the, mm. the desire for an Apple product. I get it. And I think blue text GPT, messages. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's all about the blue, the blue uh, bubbles. <laughs> um, and so now politepost.net, uh, you can go to chat GPT's website. If you don't want to use chat GPT, Bing has, uh, what is it? Google, uh, has Bard, Bard, right? Google has Bard. Bing has the other thing that yells at you. Um, you watch MSB <laughs> dispatch for that. Um, but then, uh, you know, told the user it wasn't lying, but everybody has their thing. Um, so you not only have easy to access tools, but they're, plentiful if you don't like this mm. vendor go to this vendor um and so we have this awesome convergence with all this and i think that's why we're seeing it so much today because it's so so accessible now that makes a lot of sense this this concept of uh, this industry in some ways is about 10 years behind uh the adoption of the enterprise market other than robotic process automation what do you think is going to be happening w what adoption are we going to be seeing in this industry over the next two three years well, I'll, I'll use your own company as an example. And I know that's not the point of this, but, you know, thin security, right? Like, you know, cybersecurity and awareness training. Um, these things, we're still forcing clients to use this stuff a little bit, right? And you're doing the good job of trying to make it easier, trying to apply the Apple model, make it as uh, intuitive and as easy to apply as possible. Oh, with that, with enterprise clients, look at it. You have sexual harassment training. You have EEOC training. You have diversity training. You have uh, mountains and mountains of training, and that's just, it's not a, it's not a conversation. It's just part of the job. Well, yeah. in enterprise, security and awareness training is also part of the job. It's been that way for enterprise for years. MSPs are just getting into it. So what I see coming is that a lot of these things, I think MSPs are going to feel more comfortable about, about saying, this isn't a conversation. This is just the base requirements. Just as simple as I have to offer you services and you have to pay me with money. Right. Uh, so <laughs> oh, that's how this works. Got it. So, but think of how easy that transaction is, how obvious and how much, you know, it's, it's built into your DNA. You understand that transaction. I do something for you. You pay me something that is normal. We need to get like the training stuff and the automation stuff and the AI stuff. We need to make that. So it's all just part of the DNA as well. So these are not thoughts. So we can focus on the bigger stuff, automating and, and, building amazing things that nobody else can offer, making your true market differentiate. Yeah, I see a lot of that happening in the different conversations I have with not only some existing partners, but folks like you that I've known from my start in this industry a while ago is there's a, there's a big change around, okay, security is a huge issue. It's the, at the forefront of a lot of people's mind, but that baseline that you had mentioned, that those table stakes, so to speak. Yeah. Do we even agree on what those table stakes are as an industry? It's like, not really. You ask, you ask 10 people right now what those table stakes are, and you know, three of them will give you the, the answer that fifth wall will give you, which is whatever your cyber insurance policy says, and the other seven will have a completely different answer. It's like I heard Reed right in my ear as you said that. No, so, yeah. no but, it, but it's absolutely true. I mean, if I asked an MSP, you know, do you use AV with your client? They'd laugh. Why are you asking me? Do, why, is that, why is no an option? Why is that even part of the conversation? Right. You know what I mean? Um, and we need to make all these other things that are baseline things um, part of it. And the, the downside of it is if we don't, that's where the regulation, that's where the government regulation is coming in and saying, well, we all agree these things should be done. I want us to get there before the government gets there for the simple reason that if we get there, we can set the terms yeah. and we can start focusing on the bigger and better stuff. If the government does it because they don't, I mean, CISA has admittedly said they don't understand our space yet. They're doing a lot to get into the space, but they, they want to learn more, but they're, they're not there yet. Most, and they're trying 99% of government's yeah. not trying. So if MSPs can get to it first, fantastic. And then make it easy yeah. for everybody. Maybe a part of this conversation is a, I, a statement that I, I forget who said this to me is when you're talking with small to medium sized businesses, which is the predominant like client of an MSP, 
you need to make a statement. It's you're not small enough to get hacked. You're not small enough to have an incident. You're small enough. You're too small to make the news. And that's why you won't hear about it. Uh, and because the mindset, especially with somebody like uh, when I talk with Wes Spencer, it's, you know, you're you're probably too small to get targeted. You're not too small to use a very well-known password manager that ends up getting breached <laughs> and then have your uh, and then have your accounts com- uh, compromised and get swept up into the millions of other people that are going to have their credentials abused. Well, that goes into vendor, vendor audits, due diligence, you know, recurring yeah. audits that that's S bombs. That's a whole other sub processors. That's a whole other can of worms. Uh, yeah. we'll probably take another hour talking just about that. <laughs> I think, um, uh, and I've seen this a little bit in, in kind of some of the requests that I have to deal with in, in Finn right now is, the amount of due diligence, the quote unquote maturity that our partners now expect of us and our security posture, it's definitely gone up since we first started. Uh, and I think a lot of that is to do with some of it's due to with now we're a bigger company serving bigger partners, but a lot of that has to, has to do with a mindset shift that I've seen in in the industry so far. What's um? Let's wrap this up on a piece of advice. This wild world navigating security and vendors and all this stuff. What's one piece of advice you'd give to an MSP who's either listening to this and trying to grow or maybe trying to get started? Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's not a unique thought. I didn't come up with it myself. It's not a, I'm not going to pull a, an office, you know, line here, but, um, but the truth of the matter is look at your to-do list, look at the thing that gives you dread and then do that first. If you can do that first, the rest of your day is going to be no different than you know, batters on deck, you know, putting a couple of donuts on the bat to get used to the heavier weight and take it off. And it's light as feather when you get to the batter's mm-hmm. box. Same thing, you know, so just get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Well, you heard it here first. If you're looking to get started, looking to grow in general as a person, as a business in any area of your life, do the uncomfortable thing and you'll probably end up growing in the process. Yep. Sweet. And I like to follow what the Navy SEAL say, embrace the suck. That's embrace simple. the suck. Embrace the suck. You heard it here first. Hopefully not, but maybe. <laughs> Sweet. Once again, I am Connor, CEO at Finn, host of the Gone Fishing Podcast here with my wonderful friend, Ray Orsini, and you will catch us on our next episode. See y'all soon. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in to Gone Fishing. If you want to find out more about high quality security awareness training campaigns, how to launch them in ways that actually engage employees to change their habits, then check us out, Finn Security at fincec.io, that's P-H-I-N-S-E-C.io, or click all of the wonderful links in our show notes. Thanks for fishing with me today, and we'll see you next time.